Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make With Tech. I've been covering, investigating, reviewing 3D printers for about five years now. And in the beginning, when Creality introduced the Ender 3, it revolutionized the ability for hobbyists, for home users, for small businesses to begin experimenting with 3D printers that were under $300, yet had good quality and with some work were able to produce consistent prints. But they were very slow. In general, you had to print at about 50 millimeters per second. That may meant that larger prints, this is a vase that was not printed in vase mode, would have taken five, six hours or maybe more to print. Over the last year, something remarkable has happened. You can now print large prints, prints that would have been many hours in under an hour because there are a range of 3D printers now available that are marketed as printing at 250 to 500 millimeters per second. That's as much as 10 times the published or generally usable speeds of an Ender 3. Now, in fact, we're gonna to learn today that's not completely true, but there are a variety of factors that influence print speed. One of them that people may not think about a lot is filament. So we're going to talk about all the factors a bit, but then we're gonna concentrate on a, talking about a filament from SameSmart that's been produced specifically for high-speed printers that need a high flow rate of filament. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now here at the Make With Tech organization, we help makers, users, hobbyists learn new things. And we like to learn those things interactively together. So we have a YouTube channel. You can go to forum.makewithtech.com and engage with thousands of other makers. You can go to our website at makewithtech.com and read about technology. And all we really ask is that you subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and potentially click on some of our affiliate links that help support this channel. Now today, we're going to talk about high-speed printers. The printer I used for all of these examples today is the AnchorMake M5C, which nowadays on Amazon, you can purchase for as little as $360. It's a high-speed printer with an all-metal hot end, a direct extruder, marketed as going up to 500 millimeters per second. And I will tell you, it is very fast. But let's dissect a bit about the components that are necessary, what's necessary to print faster. Well, the first thing you have to be able to do is Physically, you have to be able to move the print head, potentially the print bed, faster. Those surfaces are moved using stepper motors. So the stepper motors have to be a sufficient quality that they can handle the higher speeds without breaking down. You control a stepper motor, which is called a stepper motor because it turns like a clock. You know how the second hand on a clock is not continuous, it's step by step? That's how stepper motors work. The electronics that controls those stepper motors are integrated circuits or chips that are called stepper drivers. The stepper drivers have to be able to control those motors at very high speeds, very precisely. So we needed advances in stepper motor quality, advances in stepper drivers. 
The next thing we needed is we needed the hot ends, the assembly of the heating element and the nozzle and the extruder that pulls the filament through and pushes it through the hot end. They needed to be able to handle a higher flow rate. What does that mean? Well, as your printer is moving faster, that means you have to extrude filament more quickly. That means the volume of filament that you're going to push through that nozzle is a higher volume. So the hardware, the heating element in particular, in many of these newer hot ends, have to be able to heat a larger volume of filament more quickly. The extruder needed to be able to feed that filament in more quickly, which is one of the reasons many of these high-speed printers are direct extruders. That means the mechanism that feeds the filament is right above the mechanism that melts the filament. There's no tube, no Bowden tube connecting the two together. Now, in order to feed that filament more quickly at higher speed, the filament has to be able to melt at precise temperatures and then cool quickly. Because if it stays melted after it's laid down on the print bed for too long, when you go to put the next layer on top, it's just going to squish out, spread out. So it has to have a high, better tolerance for the point at which it melts and then the point at which it cools. It has to also be a material that flows very smoothly. So all of these factors come into play. But there's another factor that comes into play. If you're moving that print head very quickly, your printer's gonna vibrate a lot more. If it vibrates a lot more, your print quality is going to be reduced. You're going to see a phenomena called ghosting. And individual layers of that print may not line up properly. So you need to be able to address that. That's addressed both in the firmware, the software running in the printer, but also in the slicers. The newer slicers have to be able to handle the movements of the printer, sending the G code, the instructions to the firmware in such a way to minimize vibration. In some higher end devices today, this does not include the anchor mate that I used for this printer, you, they actually take and add another computer onto the outside of the printer. That computer is running a Raspberry Pi or another processor and offer running software called Clipper. And the way that works to reduce vibration is they come with a little bit of a meter, a device that you attach to the printer. You run some tests, moving the printhead very rapidly. You measure the actual vibrations because the vibrations will not only depend on the printer, but depends on the table it's sitting on. The best surface to print on is a concrete floor or table that doesn't vibrate at all. But most of us print on tables that vibrate. So the printer starts vibrating, the table starts vibrating. That set of vibrations can be measured by the sensor and used to calibrate. So all of those things need to be taken into account to go from 50 millimeters per second to potentially 500. Now, what about that 500? Well, in essence, most of these high-speed printers are not printing at 500. They're doing travel moves. That's moves where you're not extruding filament. Most of these higher-speed printers are printing at about 250, maybe 300 millimeters per second as the top end for actual extrusion. That still, if we go back to what we discussed just a moment ago, means you need to move a lot of filament. Well, one company that is now producing filaments specifically for this new generation of high-speed printers 
is called Sane Smart. And these sets of filaments are called the GT3 set of filaments. They come in a number of different formulations. These that were sent to me by Sane Smart at no cost, so I could do this review, are their matte style filaments that are really optimized to minimize your ability to see layer lines. Because one of the other tricks you use to print faster is you use larger layer heights. Instead of perhaps 0.2 millimeters, you use 0 0.24, 0 0.25, or 0.28 millimeters. In fact, the Anchormate Studio, which is a beta of a new slicer that's based on the source code from Prusa, this is a 0.25 millimeter layer height when you select the fast option. All of these prints were printed using the fast option. Now, let's take a look at this filament. This is, I've opened a number of the colors. They sent me a number of colors. This is an unopened one. It is interesting, it comes in a cardboard box um, that does not expressly say recyclable, but has the feel of something that's recyclable. It also has actually cardboard ends on the reel of filament, which is really quite nice because that is more recyclable. It's sealed very, very well. There's no air in here. There is um, a material in here, a silica gel, to absorb moisture. I found these filaments to be wound very, very well. Um, and they fed without any difficulty. The other thing I noticed immediately is while they are 1.75 millimeters, they're the standard size, they feel, let me take out one that's already open here, for some reason to the hand, they actually feel a little thicker. Perhaps it's because of the matte surface. They're also quite a bit more flexible. PLA can get quite brittle. In particular, if you let the humidity go up, PLA gets quite brittle. brittle. This seems quite a bit more flexible, which would lead to um, my belief that their marketing that says that this filament is a bit stronger is accurate. The other thing is, that while this filament, and let's make sure I get this right, is indicated as 180 to 220 degrees Celsius, it appears that the glass transition temperature, the temperature where it gets soft and starts melting, based on their literature, is quite a bit higher than a typical PLA. Typical PLA, the glass transition temperature, might be around 70, 80 degrees Celsius, this is listed as 140. That would mean that this PLA would be better for applications, let's say something you're going to use in an automobile that can quite get quite warm. It also appears that that higher glass transition temperature is one of the reasons that it works appropriately in high-speed printing because it won't start softening until a higher temperature. And then when a line of filament is laid down, it doesn't have to cool off as much in order to solidify. So those are all the things that I read about in the market marketing literature. Let me show you what I actually found. So I did some prints in Hatchbox PLA, which is a PLA I've gone to for years and works very reliably. And then also in the new Sane Smart high speed, high flow rate filament. The one thing you will notice right away is the Hatchbox PLA, the layer lines are more noticeable. And I can tell you using other prints that I've printed in traditional PLA at 0.25 millimeter layer heights, you see the layer lines the layer lines are very hard to see in the same smart filament. The other thing I noticed, and these were printed at 200 degrees Celsius initially, all of the prints. I'll talk about the fact that I increased that in a moment. 
On the hatch box, there is some very fine stringing inside. There is no stringing on this filament, but there's a place where there was an adhesion problem and a bit of drooping in a bridge. I'll show you that in a close-up. Um, I solved that problem by increasing the print temperature to about 210 degrees Celsius. And you'll see that problem more in this next print. Now, this is a vase, but it was not printed in vase mode, which is why you can see a seam very visible here. And the reason is this top section will not print properly in vase mode. In fact, it's a little messy on this print, and there's a section where the bridges fell apart. I have printed this, I didn't print it today, but I have printed this in other filaments uh, that did not occur. I believe that's because I printed it at 200 degrees C, because you'll see another print in a moment, which is absolutely perfect that I printed at 210, and that did not occur. What is very noticeable is this surface area is beautiful. It almost looks like an injection molded material because it's really so difficult to see the layer lines. Now, if you run your thumbnail or your fingernail across it, you can tell there are layer lines. It is really a beautiful surface finish. Now, the next thing I printed was this calibration cat at 200%. Once again, it's a beautiful print. It's just really clean. There is no stringing. This one I did print at 210 Celsius. Um, the detail is very nice. Layer lines are difficult to see. There was one area here where there was a bridge that once again was not perfect, um, but everything else is really perfect on this print. And I wanted to look at dimensional accuracy using this filament. So let's see here. This should be 40 millimeters. This is 39.88, which is quite good. And this is 40.01 in this dimension. Now, another way to judge dimensional accuracy is to print something where there are pieces that need to fit together. This is a little uh, screw-on container. You could use this to hold buttons or something else. Beautiful print. And once again, the thing that I notice more than anything else is the surface quality using this filament is about the best I've seen. Now, next, I printed another print to check on bridging. And this is printed in Hatchbox, and the surfaces are a little bit rough. It printed okay, but the surfaces are a little rough. This was printed at 210C, using the same smart filament, and it's gorgeous. This is once again a gorgeous print, and because you can't see the layer lines, it looks like it was injection molded. So, I hope you learned something about high-speed printing today. I enjoyed doing these experiments with a high-speed printer. Once again, I used the Anchormate M5C. I'm a big fan of the two new Anchormate printers because Anchormate is trying to do something very Prusa-like by doing a tightly integrated set of devices, firmware, and software. All manufacturers are moving in that direction. Creality is starting to move in that direction, but it seems that Anchor makes industrial engineering. They're the people who make the batteries for your phone. They make headphones under the sound core name. They make cameras. They make a wide range of things. They're a billion-dollar company. It seems their integration is a bit smoother. Likewise, this filament from SameSmart is really a very maker-friendly filament that will produce prints that I think you enjoy using functionally and as gifts. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, give me a thanks up. S subscribe to the channel. You can ask questions over at forum.makewithtech.com. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.